welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel's Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Police arrest another member of the kidnapped syndicate headed by Hami Subala, also known as Wadume in Taraba State. Joint security operatives intercept six mine resistant military vehicles in the border town of Adamawa State. President Muhammad Buhari departs Nigeria for Japan for the seventh Tokyo International Conference on African Development. And Hong Kong peaceful demonstration turns violent as police fire live round and use water cannon on protesters. For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com, youtube.com forward slash channels web. It has videos of our shows. Let's take a look at some of the images that you sent in, beginning with this one in Abule Jesha area of Lagos State, showing this gas station right in the middle of a residential area. Our eyewitness is worried that this is, a, is situated in a densely populated area and it could be danger in waiting. He wants the state government to do something about it. The next image is from Ojiachi Road in Enugu West Senatorial Zone in Enugu State. The picture shows a section of the road is broken. Uh, eyewitness reporter is afraid that this could lead to accidents for unsuspecting drivers, especially at night. The final image is from Yula at the Adamawa State Capitol, showing a man walking through the flood, which according to our eyewitness has taken over the area. He laments the pain this brings on residents, wishing that help would come their way soonest. Thank you for sending in those images and please keep more coming. Now, health, they say, is wealth and education, the bedrock of any society. However, how much attention is being given to these areas? For example, many Nigerians have criticized the low budget allocation to health and education sectors over the years. So also the budgeting process in Nigeria, with experts proposing ideas for a smooth and effective budgeting process. Our correspondent, Terry Kumi, takes a look at the variables and government's role. The need for a transparent budgeting process has been the topic of conversation for some time now in the country. Towards the end of the Eighth Assembly, lawmakers canvassed to be carried along by the executive during the preparatory stage of the budget to avoid delay in its passage. And there are also other opinions for the inclusion of the private sector in the process. Before you make budget, you invite the private sector at various segments of the economy to project what they expect from, you know, on the economic performance for the year forthcoming. But then, taking one step away from the politics of budgeting and focusing on the seemingly good relationship between the executive and legislative arms of government and the promise to work together for the good of the country, this perhaps is the best time to pay close attention to the actual details of the budget. 26. That means critical sectors should receive more attention than they used to. One of these is the health sector. For a country said to be spending an estimated $1 billion annually on medical tourism to other countries, one battling with poor medical infrastructure, outbreak of diseases, low coverage of the health insurance scheme, high rate of infant and maternal deaths, among others. Experts say the annual allocation to the health sector does not suggest that significant improvement will happen anytime soon. In Past budget allocations indicate figures that fall short of the benchmark of 15 percent, which member countries of the African Union in 2001 pledged in what was then known as the Abuja Declaration. Another sector is education regarded as the pivot of development and economic growth of any nation. Nigeria's budget for education in the last five years has not suggested that the country understands the importance of education. These figures do not meet the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization's recommendation of between 15 and 20 percent of a country's total budget, especially for a country like Nigeria with a figure of out-of-school children as high as 13.2 million and with a high number of students in foreign schools. Going forward, it is pertinent for the National Assembly to closely and with the highest level of patriotism monitor how the budget is implemented through their oversight functions, which could be carried out with the interest of the country at heart, 
especially at a time when the country is in dire need of tackling corruption and striving to secure a future of growth and economic progress. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. And our channel's television's data analyst, Babaji Dogusun, will put some of these uh, issues to perspective. Thank you for joining us on the Good program. Good evening, All right, now I see you have so many things. Uh, There's a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah. If you had listened to the president, you would find out that this is exactly what each of the ministers went home with, a lot of materials to study and to read about. But tonight, I'd like us to put this somewhere else and focus on these spike shoes. Because apart from all the documents that the president gave the ministers, this is the most important item, sure. running shoes. And that's because more than ever before, we need ministers that can run. If you want to get millions of women out of poverty, we need ministers that every day can run. We need ministers that wouldn't walk to their offices. There's so much to be done. But well, we saw ministers working. You want to get millions of children, or you want to give millions of children basic health care, you need ministers that can run. In other words, running and how good your policies can run, how good your programs can run, how good your projects can run is the first quality of a good minister. Again, we don't want ministers that will walk to the offices. We need ministers more than ever before that are not just physically or mentally fit, but they are economically fit. They know what it means to run and grow the economy, especially if we take a look at the top three facts of the economic recovery and growth plan. It will clearly let us understand why ministers need to run. On that document, for 2019 to 2020, that document shows that the government wants to grow the economy by 7% within the next one year. Currently, we are growing at 2%. So to grow at 7%, we need to run. We want to create 5.1 million jobs within the next one year. How do, we, how do the 43 ministers achieve that? They need to run. Well, there are concerns of slowing down in, in terms of revenue and how this will affect some of the portfolio of the ministries. So clearly, as you had um, said, if the money that goes into Federation account reduces, the money available to the ministries as well will reduce. And again, once such um, tendencies happen, we then will also struggle with um, being able to achieve um, our projects. So apart from running, which is the priority of all ministers, we then need to look at what are their goals because if they make their goals public, we will then know how much money they need to finance those goals. So we need ministers that can run and we need ministers and ministries to make public their goals because their goals will allow us to know how much budget will go into either education, health and all the other critical ministries that are important. Is that the only thing we need to do to ensure that they deliver on the promises? While all ministries are important, there are some ministries that are more important than, than the others. There are some ministries that can make you rich. There are some ministries that can make you poor. What I mean is there are, for instance, seven ministries that control 70% of the capital budget. Just think about that carefully. So let's take a look at the seven ministries that control 70% of the capital budget. That is where a lot of Nigerians will be looking forward to um, the growth and development that we're expecting. The, ministry, the capital budget of the Ministry of, the Def of Defense, Agriculture, Works and Housing, Transportation, Water Resources, Industry, Trade and Investment, and of course, Power. So in the 2019 budget, these are the seven ministries that control 70% of the capital budget. The question for tonight is, what ministries this time around will control most of the capital budget because the capital budget significantly impacts the growth, the welfare, and the prosperity of the nation. And we've seen what has happened within the last one year. What we are expecting to see is what will be the plans and the details of the 2020 budget that the ministries will start working on. We understand that it's important for us to be able to put more attention into education, put more attention into health, be able to meet up the sustainable development goals of these ministries and ensure... That's really the question. Are our national goals aligned with the SDG of the United Nations? The evidence shows our goals are aligned, but the evidence shows that our money 
is different from being able to achieve these goals. Let's take a look at the 17 sustainable development goals as set by the United Nations. And if you carefully look at those sustainable development goals, we'll find out that those goals are aligned with the goals of the current government. We're looking at ending no hunger, no poverty, good health, quality education, clean water and sanitation, um, life below water, life above water. So all the goals of the sustainable development agenda of the United Nations are aligned with the government's goals. We now, more than ever before, now need to grow revenue to be able to achieve these goals. And to be able to grow revenue as well, we need agencies that can run. We need men that can think, but we also need to be able to ensure that we move away from working to, to running. And you know what um, a wise man always um, said? He says that if you don't have a target, you will always achieve all those goals because you don't have a target. So we need to ask the ministers and their ministries that, yes, we've seen the government's next level agenda, but each minister, what is your goal and how fast can you run? Again, we no longer can work millicent. We, we need, need to run. run, and I know you'll soon want to. You'll be running but, off soon. But but just before, um, you know, another important thing is the budget cycle. Um, there have been talks. Critics have said we don't have something that is is fixed. We keep coming and saying, you know, we'll pass the budget uh, before December, and then before you know it, is dragging. Um, doesn't that draw us back in terms of our preparations to achieve some of those goals? It draws draws us back, and that's because we've had legislators who have been working, not running. We've had cabinet members who have been working, not running. What we expect is between now and December, we'll see ministers that will run and we'll see legislators that will be able to run to ensure that we pass the um, medium-term expenditure um, framework and the fiscal strategy for, for the government. And then we should be able to get that budget to the National Assembly, hopefully by September, October, so that the discussions will go on and then we can have a full year of budgeting. But more than ever before, even though um, the budget comes out early, we need to be able to increase our budget of, of um, 9 trillion now. 9 trillion now is significantly insufficient for the size of infrastructural um, challenges that we currently face. So more than ever before, we mustn't be satisfied with a 2% growth or a 10 trillion. The dream and the goal is we need to be able to run so that soon, very soon, we can run to a 50 trillion hour budget, a 100 trillion hour budget, and we shouldn't be satisfied with 10 trillion hour. We so need to run. Your, your crystal ball, can it tell us that 10 million people will be lifted out of poverty in a year? If the ministers run, that's what the crystal ball shows. If the ministers run, and if they run fast, if they run faster than you're about to run, then we'll be able to get uh, ministers and we'll be able to get nine, more Nigerians out of poverty. But the message again is we no longer can work. We no longer can be satisfied with the rate at which we are moving. Again, we need ministers that can run. We appreciate your time, Baba Jideh Thank you for so joining much. us. When the news at 10 returns, residents of Ilori call for the revamping of the Quara State Park, which is affecting recreation activities in the city. That's in our community report tonight. Please join us again.